tick-borne diseases. The first tick-borne disease we're going to talk about, which most of us are familiar with being from the north, is Lyme's disease. This is caused by a tick-borne spirochete called Borrelia burgdorferi. It's transmitted by ixodid ticks, including, including I. scapularis, I. pacificus, I. ricinus, and I. persulcatus. It's transmitted from the gut of the tick to the human skin at the site of a bite and then migrates outwardly on the skin. It creates a lesion called erythema migrans. This is um, showed in the picture on the bottom right hand side of a bullseye type rash, as you can see here. Lyme's disease accounts for 95% of all reported vector borne illnesses in the United States. It's, the cases remain um, pretty concentrated in the northeastern, central, north central, and Pacific coastal regions. As you can see here, it does cover a majority of where the Rasmussen um, campuses are located and a great majority out, um, out east. With the signs and symptoms, 60 to 80 percent of patients begin with a skin lesion called erythema migrans, and it starts at the tick bite site. The lesion is accompanied by flu-like symptoms, usually involves the skin, nervous system, heart, and joints. There is a few stages that, that happen with this. The first stage usually lasts about four weeks, and this is where the um, erythema migrans and the flu-like symptoms come from. Stage two follows a variable latent period where it affects the nervous system, heart, eyes, and skin. And weeks to years after infection, we see arthritis and late neurological complications. Um, I've known someone who was actually um, worked full time and had a cabin up north and he actually had to quit his job because the arthritis got so bad. Um, usually the cellular immune response to Borrelia burgdorferi antigens begin early with the illness. We can do a culture of the Borrelia burgdorferi spirochete. Um, the recognition of the, char the characteristic clinical findings, the history of the exposure, and the antibody response to Borrelia burgdorferi is usually what they go by. In a lot of cases, I, I think um, people will get the rash and they, they won't think much of it. It will goes away. So they figure, oh, it went away, so everything's fine. But if it is a rash that looks like a bullseye like that, you really need to be um, on the lookout for something like that. Um, it's unclear whether antibiotic treatment after a tick bite will prevent Lyme's disease, but they certainly do try. And they say that the prevention of Lyme's disease, what you should do is check for ticks and do um, tuck your pants into your socks. The next one is Ehrlichia. Um, with this one, the incident rates increase with age. Human Ehrlichiosis signs and symptoms include um, fever, chills, headache, and a skin rash. As you can see, I've got the life cycle on the bottom left-hand side. We've got um, ticks and deer involved here, where a human can become a vector as well. What we find with ehrlichiosis is an inclusion in AWBC. Most of you are in hematology too at this point, and you may be learning about ehrlichiosis, and you can see the um, inclusion here within the cell. Treatment is very simple with doxycycline, a type of antibiotic. The next one is babesiosis. This one's caused by babesia, which is a microscopic parasite that infects the RBCs. In the United States, babesia microti is transmitted by the I. scapularis tick. It's mostly seen in older patients, splenectinized patients, or immunocompromised patients. It can be transmitted via blood transfusion. Some of the signs and symptoms, usually the incubation period is about 7 to 21 days. It ranges from asymptomatic to becoming ra rapidly progressive or even fatal. It does cause a fever as well. You can see several different um, life cycles down here. It involves mice um, and ticks and can be transmitted um, to humans as well, and even with blood transfusions. Some of the diagnostic evaluations, they see an increased reticulite, reticulocyte count due to the hemolytic component of the disease. We saw elevated lactate dehydrogenase due to the increased cell turnover, increased bilirubin um, due to increased cell turnover, and decreased haptoglobin levels from the lysing of those red cells. Um, two rapid screening methods. We can see the intraerythrocytic organisms on the blood smear, which is the gold standard, or we can do a fields test, which is a thick blood smear. A lot of times they will do acute and convalescent antibody titers as well. 
Here's what Babesia looks like in a red cell. You can see that um, cross type pattern here. Some of the treatment of babesiosis includes antimicrobial therapy um, is recommended for splenectomized or immunosuppressed patients. They use clindamycin or an oral quinine. This concludes our section on tick-borne illness.